Like, you would die for snitching out here. People die for that. Real talk. Mama, people get bought and killed for snitching. But we're talking about life sentences here. Right. And this is like really hard. Just listen. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Times kid all three of Times kid all three of You a snitch. Blame it on your web. Everybody snitching on you. Now you telling on yourself. You don't have to tip paperwork. Because nine times ten, you hit that compound, the whole city know what you did. So yeah. you dealt with all your homeboys. Mm -hmm. But when you in the feds, we might be the only two homeboys up there. Mm -hmm. Both of us might be hot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we might be, man, we ain't hot. We ain't hot. So we go, I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing for you. You bouncing for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we got the rest of these other cities thinking, oh, those real ass niggas from Atlanta or Miami. Mm -hmm. The whole time, we some hot ass. And see, that's I'm using that word hot. I know hot mean cool in the streets, but in the in the feds, hot mean your ass a wreck. You're poison. You know what I'm saying? You're outcast. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Certain spots you did. How do they treat people that's rats? I don't f with a rat pig. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna crush you because you ain't told on me. Yeah. If you told on the next man, that's between you and him. That's y'all business. But I don't f with your pig. How do you handle being in a cell with a rat? I ain't gonna be in there alone. You ain't or he ain't? I ain't gonna be in there. I just told him. He already in the cell. Mm -hmm. I, I got a gym. I wanna get out of prison. I ain't trying to be no prison. Warrior or whatever, so I'm trying to avoid. Shit. Yeah, you understand know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if he already in there, that's mm -hmm. his deal. Mm -hmm. And if they let him live, I'm gonna let him live. He ain't told on me, right. but if that's my rat. I'm gonna kill my rat. Mm -hmm. But if he ain't told on me, that's your business. That look like if you into homosexuality, you know what I'm saying? The joint. If I ain't into it, that's your business. That's your business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That ain't for me to go announce that. that that's your business. Come home to the brother, Big Meat. You know what I'm saying? Welcome home. He paid his dues. He's back out in the, into the world. He was loved by a lot of people. You can credit BMF to all the bad women in Atlanta. Because <laughs> <laughs> apparently all the strippers just migrated. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, I've heard stories of what it was like when, you know, they were out. It was a lot of money being passed around. It wasn't all about drug money, there were a lot of businesses that were flourishing because of them. There were a lot of people that were supporting their households because of these guys. So, welcome home to Big Meech. You got the BMF. Um... Welcome home. Let me say shout out to Big Meech. BMF was very good to me when I went down to Atlanta. I mm -hmm. did the first piece on them in Source Magazine. That piece was when they launched their record label. I remember Atlanta 2004 or five. Y'all motherfuckers is dicking already. Talk about Big Meech home, Big Meech home. Half of y'all motherfuckers don't even know Big Meech. My mom, start acting like a groupie. Chill. My mom, I know you horny, but you know what I'm saying? Big Meech don't want you. You know what I'm saying? But chill. Half of y'all niggas posting old pics from old to yeah, it made curse to the mob, BMF, I got my chain. Nah, man, he gonna fuck around and snatch that chain off your neck as soon as he see you, nigga. <laughs> nigga, it's like 35 new niggas in BMF, we don't know none of them. I don't know none of them. They all got BMF chains? Fuck is this, Death Row Records? <laughs> you curse to the mob. Nigga, not getting none of that champagne that got you. <laughs> Better drink that water. <laughs>some homies I was locked up with, right? And um, one of them, I come to find out through some paperwork that uh, he told it, right? Now, inside the joint, they'll never tell you this. You'll probably never hear this. But a lot of time when they put the word out on you that, you know, you, uh, you on the horn, which means like you telling, you know, a lot of people kind of play you a certain way so a certain you know uh situations you can't be involved in whether it's selling cigarettes 
selling illegal like weed. I know cats used to sell weed out there on the joint, in the joint. Um, because the integrity, you know, they don't know if you find out what's going on, you might use that as leverage and put them folks in their business. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times snitches, they don't get no, they don't get no play. You know what I'm saying? So uh, dealing with the big me thing, man, you know, I'm seeing that a lot of people are kind of like up in arms. And let me, let me get this straight. I would never advocate for anybody to, you know, even with the welcoming thing, right? You know, when you welcoming somebody home, you know, um, all of that. I think I would shy away from it simply because it's just not, a, you know, it's not like you're glamorizing and you want to be celebrated. Because first and foremost, you want to be on your feet. A lot of times when dudes come home, they're not on their feet. Well, in Big Me's situation, he got a son that's out there that he put into the, you know, into the limelight. But now all his extra stuff coming out about him being uh, associated with uh, this female that's supposed to be working with the feds. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about Big Meech. And um, you have to, because I'm, I'm actually listening to your audio on Clubhouse, having you explain it. I think I kind of get it. You're, I think you and a lot of people have said that there might have been cooperation through a third party, which that's the first time I've ever heard. Yeah, Tammy, Tammy, the Tammy Tower bitch, yeah. Okay. That was Blue Da Vinci broad at first, you know that, right? Really? Yeah, that was his broad, right? So, um, l l l here's the thing, okay, let me, let me look. Let oh, okay, me, break it down, please. Let me, let me break it down. Okay, Big Me just parole, right? Yes. And he paroled to Fort Lauderdale to his son's little niece to his baby mama, right? Okay. So let's establish that. All right. The first person had Big Me's life rights is a dude named Cuffy. Okay. From St. Louis, right? Okay. All right. Cuffy is the one that took Big Me to a whole nother level. Money-wise, all that. He was what he was. So the guy with Cuffy, everything went up three, four hundred percent. So when Meech is in there and he sent word through Tammy, because now that's his bro, to holler at Cuffy to make a move, he makes a move. He makes a move, federal agents come in. Cool. Come time for court, CI cooperate number one gets on the stand. CI number one is Tammy. Mm. It's also stipulated in the documents that CI number one is also the new owner of the of the BMF rights on Big Beach side. Now, here goes the thing. Pippi said had to do the business with who? Tammy. Really? Why, if you know this woman right here, this Joe Broad, is getting on the stand as a third party cooperate against your old man Cuffy. Why does she got your life rights? Why don't your baby mama that you just broke you got your life rights? Why don't your son got your life rights? Your sister, your mama, your daddy, your brother. Because she has to cooperate for a reason working for you. Now, remember back in 16, 17 when they said Big Me's gonna get out early? Mm -hmm. Hold on. That, was, that, that was all it is but she fucked the federal agent they pulled it off the table it's all in the work Wait, it's gonna tell you CI number one is the dude that owns the life rights to Big Beach and be a bad bro but by the way I, I'm, I'm looking at a Vlad TV um, thumbnail it says Tanisha Welch I don't know who that is it says Big Beach sold his life rights to a piece of shit informant really? Bro, that listen, hey, listen, ain't no soul, nothing. It's her. And right now, if you go look at the red carpet events, Google it. You'll see her. Who? Tammy? Nigga, Google it. Wait, wait, how can I find it? So, so, uh, big, big meat, um, I'm trying to find the Tammy person. I don't know who that is, though. Hold on, what's this? 
Yeah, yeah, that's kind of crazy though. Ain't no kind of yeah, crazy. Yeah, yo, it's only one reason why. Is that a know. thing though? Could you like? But is that snitching though? Because yo, I, by the way, and and Hell I listen. Yeah, that snitching. Nigga is third part. That's why them niggas in the fans is getting out. Watch this, right? Look, look. I'm already in there, right? At mm -hmm. you come in. Yeah. I'm in there with fifty years. You come in. I befriend you, get to know you, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh -huh. I'm like, yeah, man, you know, I still got a few teams out there doing their thing. You see, I'm doing all right for myself in here. Uh -huh. You're like, yeah, man, I got a thousand motherfucking bricks. I got very such and such. If I can, you know, shit, I ain't, I don't trust none of my people, but shit, you know, we could work something. All right, but let me get you 10 bricks up front, and then you move them. We keep moving them, right? Boom. I call R&B. R&B, listen, this nigga got a thousand bricks, Right? Contact them folks, let them know they had, well, I didn't agree to move them for him. This is what it's going to be, boom, boom, boom. Ask them, you know, if I move the majority of the bricks, how much time they'll knock off of my head. All right, baby, they stand for every motherfucking 100 bricks you move, they're going to take seven years, eight years, 10 years off, whatever. She's my third party cooperate. Okay, no, no, okay, no, I'm saying that. Hey, hey, you know hey, what I'm saying? And hey, let me ask you, let me ask you this question, because so so he so he was given thirty years because, because I think this is a kind of argument. He was given thirty years, right? Yeah. So if if he got locked up in 2005, 30 years would have been him getting out in 2035, right? 85 percent. Okay, and and 85 percent of that would have been maybe 25 and a half. Okay, exactly. So so, so he would have got out in. 24, 24 at best. Okay, so so, so let's say half, right? six months off of the halfway house, a year he didn't took the little drug program for so twenty four years. He got out in nineteen years. He out five years or six years or five years or well, yes. And I and I guess that's what the counter argument is, though. Uh, I'm whack. Why would somebody cooperate? For only five years off. The whole point of cooperating is to be like. Blue Da Vinci did a safety valve for eight months off. What you mean? What's a safety valve? <clears throat> that's a whole nother story. But listen, anybody that says why would somebody cooperate for only five years off is a motherfucker that ain't never did no prison time. Oh. After 19, 20 years, that five years is a motherfucking eternity. Nigga, when you 56 years old, that's the difference between 56 and 62. Is it still only five years off? Now, he his third-party cooperation didn't bring him home early. He's not home early on no telling. I got the paperwork on why he's home early. Why is he, why is he home early then? Oh, let me go pull the work out. He ain't, he's not home early for no telling. It was half or 15 or what it, what it was, but he was supposed to get out in 25 or 26. But uh, apparently, uh, through something of the courts, they released him this morning. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know what the information is, but you got a lot of soothsayers. Uh, Yosemite Sam was talking about he was a rat, and now all the man you, you talking about Malcolm talking about the chickens coming home to roost. Yeah, all all of these dudes that did all that 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 naysaying and talk now this boy the back and in position because you know they're gonna really do some stuff with him. Fifty is really in his corner, so Fifty Cent is in his corner. He's gonna be a lot of power plays. For these the, these these rats that was talking about people as rats, Yosemite Sam talking about everybody's snitching and you're the biggest rat on on public TV. Dippling, dabbling in the Skittles life, in the rainbow life, we didn't really care about that either. The only way we cared about that if it was somebody in your circle, and that's the thing about it. You got to worry about what's in your circle. You don't worry about what's outside the circle. So even here on the streets, when you're on the streets, I don't care about, you know, what's happening outside, you know, in terms of your neighborhood. You take care of your neighborhood. You know, it's an old saying, you don't shit where you lay your head. And that's the thing, same thing in the streets. You don't poop where you lay your head. So even in jail, you know, wherever you go, you want to maintain a reputation that's equivalent to 
what you had on the streets. And that means that you were solid. You know, you could be trusted. And uh, me, personally, I was like one of them entertainment dudes. I was like the escape. You know, there was the radio, but I was the opposite side of the radio. Like, you were hearing stuff that you would probably never hear on the radio. But any two ways, you know, um, I don't advocate for it. You know, I don't advocate for the whole snitch thing. I mean, a civilian is a civilian. If you out in the streets, then you playing by a different set of rules. But even today, dudes ain't even playing by those rules. You got dudes like 6 9 and I understand what he went through, but that's just what it is. So, you know, that's what it is. That's what it all. I'm going to show y'all something real quick, man. I damn near set my house on fire. <laughs> damn near set my house on fire. I was uh burning some leaves. You know, I come out here and rake leaves. I'm burning some leaves, right? So all the ashes were burning. I guess the wind blew and took it into the tree. And it set my damn tree, it set the tree, all the tree on fire. See that on the inside? It set all that on fire. It went all the way up. It went all the way up. Yeah, so I'm in the back and I see, as you can see, like it burned all of that up. It burned all of that up. But uh, luckily I had some good neighbors while I was asleep, they grabbed the water hose I got. I got like 150 foot water hose. They came and watered it down and put it out for me. So, uh, thanks to them, man. You did. But uh, subscribe, like, comment, man. I'm finna change up the whole algorithm, I guess, of what I'm into. You know, I'll sparingly deal with certain topics, but, uh, that's what we going to. We going to talk about law and order. Talking about the pen. We talking about subject matters that kind of like affect the youth. And that's kind of like who I want to reach. I want to reach those cats. So it's a big bass life, man. Like, comment, subscribe. You need what I'm saying? And until next time, you heard me. Woo. My biggest regret in life is um, not using my time on this earth and more time. Bag, I got a lot more ass, nothing about me average. They get mad and they act like you never had a mother at it. Chasing these chickens, pop out, hitting them gone, you drop by. Box don't belong to you, cock block. Got too many files, need to drop by. New Orleans, wet, wet, mop, mop. Dreadhead, bumper clock, top pop. Talk your shit, let a bop, bop. Fall asleep, call the beat, bop, bop. Dancing in the club or the drop top. Just like a f***ing yap, yap. Pull up in the cut, hit a pop, pop. That's why I'm moving like Tupac.